Welcome back everybody, Max here. Okay, by popular request, I am going to show you how to statically IP your Xbox, your computer and all that fun stuff um, to try and at the very least make your home network a little bit more fluid and maybe alleviate some of the problems that we're still experiencing with uh, DICE's recent netcode uh, update patch influence help or whatever else you want to call it so right now you're seeing some uh, pretty crazy funky stuff going on on the screen which you don't want to see so let me get rid of that this is my my screen so first things first you're going to want to write some numbers down so grab a pen and paper and we'll get started so in the search area down here if you're operating on Windows 10 type in CMD that opens the command prompt window and now in the, let me see if I can blow this up and make it bigger. Right, there you go. Maybe you'll be able, be able to see it better. In here, you want to type in IP config forward slash all. And all in one word. Hit return. You're going to see a whole bunch of numbers are going to pop up on the screen. Don't worry about all of that. We don't need to get into the, uh, the nuts and bolts of all of this crap. But uh, there are a few numbers in here that are going to be relevant to to us and what we need to do so first things first this number right here where it says ipv4 address this is a statically assigned ip address i've given myself but <clears throat> this number will probably be different for you guys it may be way it will probably be 192 one, 168.1 and then another number within a within a 10 digit range because whatever devices you've got fired up at home right here right now it will sequentially list those and that is done by DHCP which is dynamic host configuration protocol we're not going to get in heavily into that because it gets technical but you basically your router will automatically assign everybody an IP address when they come in the house um, and it will sequentially list them all the way up until it reaches the top of this class network which is a C class network this is the subnet mask you need to uh, you need to write this down as well this is uh, typically standard it's going to be 255 255 255 no one's getting to get in the subnetting and i'm certainly not going to explain subnetting right here right now that's uh not even a topic we're not going to get into um default gateway you need this number this basically is the ip address which gets you out to the outside world everything else so far we're dealing with is internal this is your outside uh network so 192.168.1.1 is what is gets you out to the outside world so get those numbers written down we're going to need them and that is the end of this get rid of that screen so next thing to do is get access to your router now all routers typically work in a very similar fashion whether it's a Linksys or whatever I have a Netgear router I have an R7000 Netgear so for the purposes of this obviously we're going to be using that to get into your router you are going to enter in 192.168.1.1, which is basically the, the server number of my router. So those are the numbers that you'll have written down, which we just looked at. And I'm babbling, but that's basically what this is about. Username, if you have not changed it, will be admin. And password, if you've not changed that, will be password, all lower casement. However, I have changed mine, so I have to enter in something completely different. So this will bring up the Netgear Genie screen if you're operating a Netgear router. It will show you on the basics homepage. It will show you the number of attached devices. It will show you the wireless stuff. It will show you the network key code and password and all that fun stuff, although uh, I'll be deleting that out. Um, internet status, it will show you what's going on there, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent and so on and so forth and these are all basic settings all the way down we're not going to be in here we don't care about them whatsoever the only thing that we do want and this will speed up the process a little bit later down the line go into attached devices and when this opens up it will show you a list of everything that is attached within this network so for the purposes of this uh, tutorial we are well I'm going to cover both because it works the same way both out the gate but for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to use the desktop, which is my laptop, which is statically assigned as well. I'm going to go into here, and under MAC address, you need to write down the MAC address or copy it, highlight it, 
press Control C to copy it, and, and it will store it on the computer's uh, clipboard for you. And that's really all you need to do in here. But you do need this number, so if you don't, if you don't want to do this, then write it down. Whatever you have to do, but take that down. You're going to want that, and it's going to speed some things up. We're going to go into Advanced, and we're going to go into Setup, and we're going to go into LAN Setup. Now, LAN Setup is your local area network, and the WAN is the wide area network. Basically, this is your house, and this is the rest of the world. And right now, we're dealing with us. So let's get into this. Obviously, on my screen, I have already done this, um, and so it's it's going to be a little confusing, but Basically, this will be blank when you first start in here. There will be no address reservations whatsoever. So you're going to want to hit Add. And wait for it to do its thing. And then it's going to ask you for an IP address. And this is where things get funky. So right here, right now, more than likely, um, and we're going to use the wife's iPad as an example. This address is 192.168.1.16. So this is this, the DHCP assigned address to this device. The MAC address is its physical name, a bit like your own name. It doesn't change. It's yours. This is a number that is assigned to every device in the world, whether it's on your network. And this is this never changes. This is its name. Um, there are ways of changing this, but you don't want to do that because it's a federal offense, so don't do that. Um, so this number is statically assigned, uh, sorry, it's dynamically assigned by DHCP in the router, and we don't want that. So what we do want is our own address. So you'll see it begins off for you, 192.168.1. Dot, and it's blank. 192, this is a C-class network. All networks have a total number of addresses that can be assigned. The C-class is the bottom of the pile. There are 255 different addresses you can assign to this. And those out there that are jumping up and down going, that's bullshit, there's some reserved. They're quite right, zero and 255 are reserved for the network. And so you can't use those whatsoever. So technically speaking, you have 254 with which to choose from. My advice to you guys is not to mess with DHCP, leave it alone, but make sure this number is high enough, like so, that it, you're not going to have 50 people coming into the house connecting to your Wi-Fi or your internet, and therefore the dynamic host configuration protocol will not assign an address above this number or even get to this number, which means this will be reserved for us and it's all sweet and tickety-boo. So. Pick yourself a nice high number, and it could be 100, it could be whatever you want it to be, but it could be 27, I don't care, but it's up to you. But assign it further up the address range. MAC address, well, that was what we took down when we first began. So, again, smack it. If you've control seed it, control V it, obviously I've not saved the right information, but that's where you enter that in. And device name, well, this is entirely up to you. I mean, you could call it Susie or Jennifer if you really wanted to. It's entirely up to you, but this is basically what you're going to call your device. Now, I'm not going to add this in here because I've already done, so we're just going to cancel that out. But when you guys have done it, you're going to hit Add. And it will appear down here, just like this. MAC address shown there. I don't, a device name, Omen Laptop, is what I named that. There's its IP address that I statically assigned it. And that's sweet, and that's all done. Going to hit Apply. It's going to run back through this system, and you'll see these little bars and stuff go up. Um which means it's applied it to the router, but it will not have applied it to your computer, so be aware of that. Don't think it's gonna be running on it immediately. It will not. You can either refresh it within this within this menu, or do it the easy way, let's keep it simple, is basically restart your computer, and when you've restarted your computer and it comes back up, the router will then assign the number that you've just set. In my case, it will be this number right here. The principle for doing it for Xbox One is exactly the same. You will need the MAC address for the Xbox, and you can find that in exactly the same way as we did this already. Um, and then, obviously, you will then assign it its own IP address. And the principles work very similar to Xbox, except you don't need to restart it, and we're going to go into that next. So we're finished in here, and this is all done. So we will come out of this like so. And now we are going to go over to the Xbox. So you're back to seeing this crazy screen. And boom. Now we're going to see this screen here instead. So what you want to do is when you get into your Xbox on your home screen, 
is you want to go over here, get into settings, network settings, and then you're going to see where it says set up a wireless network or advanced settings. Now, I will say this, which I didn't go over. If you are operating wirelessly, you need to take down the wired, uh, sorry, the wireless uh, MAC address, not the wired one. That's the only difference between the two. But you do need to take down the wireless one. Otherwise, it will not work and you'll screw it up. So, advanced settings. Go into that. IP address settings. So, go into this manual. And in here, you're going to see right now, mine is actually already showing the static IP that I already assigned it. And that was the number we've just done. So you're going to take the number that's in there. You're going to delete it out of the field. And the way you do that, just in case you do not know, is the right bumper navigates you along these numbers. There's always three of them. Delete them out. And then obviously just whack them back in. And when you're done, scroll to the next one and so on and so forth all the way down the line until you get to this and then that's all tickety-boo and then you hit enter and then it's going to want you to enter the subnet mask which we put in earlier which is 255 255 255 and then it's going to want you then it's going to ask you for the gateway so this is the way you get out to the outside world on the internet so we would have all, we already took this number down i happen to know that mine is 192.168.1.1 like so and we enter that <clears throat> and then the settings and all the rest of it will be stored in there and everything will be sweet when you press back it will say hopefully it will say your console is connected to the internet and congratulations guys you have just statically assigned an IP address to your Xbox one other thing we can go into while, while we're talking about it is your DNS settings your ISP or your internet service provider will stat, will dynamically assign you a DNS setting. It's typically shit. So get download yourself something called Namebench, and I'll I'll show you that real quick on the screen. Bear with me. You're gonna see some crazy stuff going on again. Here we go. It makes us all feel ill. Go into here. Open up the internet. Type in Namebench, like so. Hit return. Go to Namebench download, make sure it's this. So check, check, this is a good habit to get into. So check this address underneath. The first four parts of this are great. HTTPS, this is to do, the S stands for secure. So gives you a good inv indication that it's uh, it's all tickety-boo. If you look down here where th this one here is Softpedia, this is a third party offering the same thing. Just a straight up triple W, don't, don't have any of that we want some HTTPS a little bit more secure get into that and you're going to bring this up I'm not going to download all this fun stuff because this is very very simple download this very safe download it open it up keep these two boxes checked and hit start benchmark now this can take up to 30 minutes of your life but search that and what it will do is it will search through all of the very best DNS servers in your area DNS is uh, a name, a domain name server protocol, which basically means that if you entered in, I don't know, let's say we're searching for how to how to do what we were just talking about. So if you entered how to statically assign an IP, you write that in to you. It makes perfect sense. It's written in English, um, but the computer doesn't see it that way. It sees it as a bunch of numbers and all that fun stuff, and that's how it funnels it down the pipeline. And the faster it can do that, without losing packets and all kinds of other data uh, that that is basically what this does this is a conversion program for for computer talk which gets stuff going backwards and forwards and, and making sure that that what you wanted it is getting out as fast as you know the question sorry you asked that goes out to where you want it I'm making a really piss poor job of explaining that but that's basically what DNS is this is going to return you the top DNS servers in your area I strongly suggest you write those numbers down as well then you're going to come back out of there and you are going to go back to your Xbox where it says DNS settings. You're going to do exactly what you did before. Go to manual and then you're going to enter in a primary DNS and then you're going to enter in a secondary DNS and you're going to hit enter and it will upload those two DNS um, 
servers into here, which again should should increase or at the very least stabilize connection and, and just make the whole process run a little smoother. I'm not promising you this is going to solve all the issues you're having online when it comes to Dice's netcode, but it will certainly it will certainly help and, and speed up your performance on your own network at your own end. That is oh I tell you what we'll do while while I'm still jibber jabbering away and one final thing that no one covers because they always like to break it down into twenty thousand videos and uh, I don't want to do that. I want to let's not do that. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to minimise it and I tried to shut it down. So we're going to go back to our router and I am going to quickly show you how to port forward and that way I think I'm covering all the bases so again as a refresh username is admin unless of course you've changed it password is password unless of course you've changed it get into your router we're going to go to advanced and we're going to go to advanced setup and we're going to go down to port forwarding and as you'll see I've already port forwarded my stuff leave the server IP address blank you're going to add a custom service I'll leave this screen up so if you want to press pause and take these numbers down these are the actual ports that you will want to enter in this is ports for for gaming online and for battlefield one so take a note of those you can find these on the internet they're not difficult to find in fact they're on EA's homepage um, you're going to add a custom service and when it goes into this here by this point you will now see this is my xbox this is my computer this is the statically assigned ip we're going to hit that because that's what we want to use and then what we're going to do is we are just going to enter in the number that i just showed you on the previous page or that you've got off of line don't be too concerned with tcp and udp for those of you that don't know transmission control protocol is what tcp stands for and user data protocol is udp they both work in a very similar way they both sit on top of ip addressing and basically tcp how do we do this simply so tcp will basically tell you that it's been received so it's a bit like having a package signed for by the mailman udp really doesn't care this is predominantly used for gaming online and, and streaming and stuff um, and it really doesn't care. It'll just keep funneling the packets down the line. It'll just keep sending the trains, to use that analogy. It'll just keep sending them. And it really doesn't care if it's been received or not, but it's going to keep sending packets regardless of what's going on. TCP will not. If it doesn't receive them, it'll send a message back saying incomplete, didn't get all the message, you know, I can't accept this package, blah, 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 blah. That's the difference between the two. I strongly urge you to keep it set at TCP and UDP. Enter in those numbers, the computer will figure it out, use the same port range internally, hit apply, it will then apply that stuff back to this static IP address, and boom, now you've just port forwarded your Xbox 2, or in this case, I've used the computer to port forward, not the Xbox. Um, personally, I think it's a better way of going about it, um, to use these port forwards doing that, and I stream and all that fun stuff, or I'm trying to. Um, utilizing this so there you have it guys that is how you port forward that is how you static IP that is how you even do your, your DNS stuff and I have wrapped it all up in one video I hope it's not a million miles long I hope it's clear and concisive um, and if you have any questions furthermore or you broke your system or something like that then by all means leave a comment down below I will certainly uh, get back to you and I'll monitor them like a hawk and I'll answer whatever I can as fast as I can and try and help you guys out especially with your home networking I hope that clears a few things up for you and uh, I will be uploading a video later on today uh, unlock the hell regal the defensive version it's shite but I'm going to do a video on it and nonetheless and give you my viewpoint and thoughts and all that kind of stuff so look out for that as always thanks for watching really really appreciate it and uh, leave comments down below like subscribe and all that fun jazz and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Oh, look at me. I sound like Westy. All right, guys. Ta-da.